you're not willing to forgive yourself and you're not surrendering yourself to God's will. And you're trying to figure it out all by yourself. And if you don't let go of all of that, you're just going to be stuck or you're going to find yourself repeating the same thing over and over and over it, which I did. What does it take to transform life's challenges into a beacon of hope and leadership for others? Welcome to Seek Go Create, where today's guest, Ron Cool, brings a unique blend of family values, spiritual guidance, and entrepreneurial spirit. As a dedicated husband, father, and the visionary behind the New Path, New You podcast, Ron leads by example, inspiring men to embrace their roles in their families, workplaces, and communities with faith and purpose. Ron, welcome to Seek Go Create. Wow, oh, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for the introduction. You and I've had a brief chat a while back. Man, we connected well and loved it and said, man, we need to talk more with the microphone going. So here we are. And I, I gave you a slight warning on this, and we're both excited about this question. So Love let's it. start this way. Somebody yeah. asked Ron, what do you do? What's your answer when somebody asks you that? Gosh, that is, as soon as you told me that question, I was like, man, that is the hardest question. And it's like, what is your elevator pitch, right? But it's such a, it's a, it's a unique question because it kind of depends who I'm talking to, right? And so for the longest time, I had two different versions of me and now it's okay. I just want everything to be very singular. So for me, my mission is to help men become spiritual leaders in their family and actually, actually lead their family well and not lose their family. Cause I found myself uh, a while back in that spot and God really, you know, slapped me across the face, if you will, to get my attention. And in the past I've helped people launch podcasts. I'm very passionate about that, but now it's really turning that passion to help Christians launch podcasts. And I enjoy doing that. But for me, it's about leading men. I lead a men's ministry at my church and, and helping them really understand who God's calling them to be in their families. And it's a lot different than what society tells you. To be. All right. So you opened up this door, so I'm going to go through it. Go for you it. You said you, you used to give two different responses. Mm -hmm. Let's go back in time and tell me when it was that if someone sure. asked you what you do, and give me the two responses that you gave. Cause we, we kind of uncover a bunch of stuff here. We like the sure. journey and things like that. So tell me old Ron or Ron before you were cool or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> what was your response? Before I was cool, I wasn't born. So that, that's, that one's easy. <laughs> so we've addressed right. one thing and I, I want the audience cause the audience is going, is this guy's name really Ron cool? And yes, it's a name that you were given at birth. Correct. That is correct. Try ordering something online. It's not as cool, quote unquote, as you would think it is. Right, um, but right. all right. So, so back up, back up. Give me the, give me the, the two, the two headed two. Ron answer for what you do and tell me roughly when it would have been. Okay. That's super easy. So it was about almost four and a half, five years ago. And there was, there was, there was like a home run, which was a totally different person than people saw outside. And then there was the at work Ron or the entrepreneur Ron, which was extremely driven. And if people asked me what I did, I helped them ex increase their visibility, traffic and sales. It was really simple. I, I created an agency around that and it was driven money. It was to make money. And that's what my focus was. And I, and my problem is I am a. I'm a workaholic and that was a lot of fun. So I said whatever I needed to say to get people to look at it in their frame of mind. So I can chameleon to whatever someone needed to hear to get them to understand they needed X product to help them with their visibility traffic and sales and, and their entrepreneurial journey. Um, 
And I took a lot of credit for that. I took all the credit for that. And fast forwarding to who I am now, God really was showing me, like, if you look back, if you look back at that journey, there was never an ad. There was never anything we did to get a client. Clients came to us. And those clients were all faith-based Christian entrepreneurs. And I took all the credit and never gave credit to God. And he asked me to shut that down, right? And by shutting that down, I had to really focus on who I was because my identity was that guy. My identity was that Ron Cool. And that identity, I even, I would get confused at home, right? And then I would find myself selling my wife into an idea, <laughs> right? And it wasn't like I meant to do it. It was just, that's who I became. And, and it's funny because on the journey, I had to explain to my wife, hey, who I was, I created a persona of who I thought everyone wanted me to be probably in eighth grade. Like it's not a small, short ask. It was, this is who I needed to be, become popular. This is who I needed to be to be the most liked person. This is who I needed to be to climb the corporate ladder. It didn't matter, but I was never just who God asked me to be. Did you have a relationship with him growing along or were, were you... Or were you, would you just plug in and, and all when it was, when it was convenient or when you oh. thought it needed to happen? I think it's funny because God, God is really, we just had a small group and they're like, okay, was God really like trying to talk to you or get your attention up until that point? And what's funny is prior to meeting my wife, um, I did not have a relationship. He used her to bring me to him. And she's always made me a better person. Now, when we first, when we first started dating, like she, she's very, very much very Christian. Let's just put it that way. She knows the Bible. She can spit verses like that. I, I cannot, I could roundabout say something, but it's like first John 15, whatever. Right. She knows it. And when we started dating, she's like, Hey, our foundation has to be rooted on, on God. And I was like, okay. So it's like our third or fourth date. We went to go get new Bibles. Okay. And we're at the Bible store. I was like, hey, why don't you just put your new name on it? Cause you know how you can engrave it. Right. It's like third date, third date. And I was like, just put your new name on it. And she looks at me, she goes, really? I go, you want it to last forever. Right. You don't want to just use it for a season. And so she put Rachel cool on her Bible. Right. But we, we drew very close to God. We got married and, and we were getting really close, but the enemy loves to go where, you know, to break the unity and, and he loves that. And I fell away. We moved, we had a great church in Indiana. We moved back to Colorado and we were in another church that just had the wrong attitude about it. And so I disconnected myself from it. And once I disconnected myself from it, I became who I was before I got married. It was, it was like, oh, I, that's an easy fix, right? Then we going along, me, going along almost. I want, to, I want to pause you. I want to pause you real quick here because this is, yeah. this is what came to me. So I'm going to ask it here before we get too far down the road. Sure. Sure. Go. If someone says something like that and, and truthfully, Ron, you're telling a lot of mine and my wife's story too. Mm. I didn't ask her to put her name on a Bible. I was going to ask you if that was your proposal. I'm going, that's an interesting proposal. Do you want to, do you want to buy a Bible and put my last name on it? I'm right. trying to think if that's good or not. So my wife in our dating process asked me about my spiritual walk and I was in some philosophy class at the time at Georgia Tech, and I kind of gave her a flippant, not the correct right. answer. Mm -hmm. She didn't like the answer. And so I had to get back in sales and pitch mode, which to me, you seem like a pretty good sales pitch guy too. 
from right. what I've heard even in the few times we met. Right. But, but, but then, and then there was a journey that went on from that. I won't go into that, but it sounds like there was part of a journey, but when I hear somebody say they started down a path and then they fell back, it kind of makes me want to know, did they really start down the path or was it, or were they still, and I'll go ahead and say it exactly this way. Were they sure. still serving, trying to serve two masters, God and mammon? And what I'm hearing, and you, and then I'll pause and you could chime in and keep going with the story. What I'm hearing is that you were probably trying to serve two masters, and that's not possible. 100%. And, and I would love to say I was trying to not serve two masters. That's just a lie. I was serving not God. That's the end of the story. And I, I don't like surrendering to anything. Okay. <laughs> I just don't. Um, and he had to break me in order to allow, and, and this is interesting. This is, this is really interesting. So I'm going to, I'm going to fast forward and then we can go back or wherever you want to go. But he's been really telling me to get out of the boat. Okay. And, and I'm like, all right, Lord, because in, when this journey started, he told me to get to know Peter. Right. And I'm like, okay, I'll just do studies on Peter and all this other stuff. And this is three years, three and a half years, like four years. And, you know, I shut down my business. I really just focused on my marriage. I focused on chasing God and really going after God. And then whatever God said to do, I just said, yes. So one was closing the business and and that's a story we could talk about later, but, um, this whole get to know Peter was just resonating with me. I was like, oh my gosh. So I'm reading everything. And then the chosen TV show comes on and my family, we watch that. We don't watch any other TV and we're watching. And there was an argument between his wife and Peter and Peter was very arrogant. Peter was very self-centered. Peter could do it all himself. And I'm like, ouch. Okay, Lord, I understand. Okay. So then three years later, I'm, I've grown a lot in my spiritual growth. I, I'm helping out at church a lot differently, but I keep hearing get out of the boat. I'm like, what is get out of the boat? Right. And, and I'm talking to Rach about it. I'm like, all right, honey, he keeps saying, get out of the boat. Is it a comfort boat? What is it? Like, take the step, take the step, take the step. Okay. I'm going to take a step. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but then we watched season three episode, the last episode of the chosen. And it's when Peter stepped out of the boat and kept his eyes on him. And I was like, okay, that's nice. Didn't resonate. Okay. It was the first time like a Peter thing didn't resonate. So I'm in my quiet time and I get very clearly go watch the show again. And I'm like, well, we just watched it. So it's Friday night, movie night. We're turning on The Chosen. And my oldest daughter goes, hey, let's just start it over until season four. And I go, mm, mm, I need to watch this one again. I know we just watched it last week. And everyone's like, okay. And I, I, Rachel knew what I was talking about. And I'm watching it. And I just start weeping. Weep. And she goes, are you okay? I was like, no. Like, I understand. I understand what he's saying now, like take this step and keep your eyes on me. And I've been afraid to take a step for the last two and a half years. I've never been patient. It has actually freaked my wife out because uh, I'm a doer and I've just been not doing. <laughs> and what I realized is me taking that step, I was afraid that step led back to the old me and I didn't want that. And he's as long as you trust me and look at me. It won't. Real quick, it's probably not a quick answer. Sure. What is the what does the boat represent? Wow, that's a great question because I've I thought I knew what it meant. Where I kind of the comfortability. I've been helping out at church, doing things there, and it's okay. And this is something I'm wrestling with, like right now. Does that boat mean stop doing that and do what I told you to do? And it could be, it could be there. And, and so that's, this is, this is super fresh. This is like a week ago. <laughs> so it's, I'm still processing it, 
but I'm starting to really understand the step he's asking me to take is the step he asked me to take three and a half years ago, which is really focus on men and really focus on like the new path to you came from him. I tried to argue with God about the name not being available. And I was like, you, you know how you reason with the, the, with how'd God? that work like, okay. out? How'd that, how'd yeah. that argument go with you? I, I'll tell you how it went. I was like, God, there's no way new path knew you is available. That seems very logical for anyone to do. And no one had it. And I was like, that's weird. And I was like, all right, Lord, if I'm truly supposed to do it, the URL will be available, which it won't be like a dot com won't be available for new path new dot com. I got it for a penny, a penny for two years, a penny. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, Lord. Okay. So then I jumped on it. And then what's funny, I've helped hundreds of people launch shows. And my, my third thing I talk about is imposter syndrome. Right. And I talk about it all the time. I've never had it ever, ever, ever. I've been on stages. Uh, I've had 400 episodes of another show. I've just never had it. And then I'm doing this, doing new path near you. And I had it. And I was like, what are you doing? And the voice in my head is, you shouldn't be talking about this. This isn't you. No one will like you. And he went, and went right after everything that I've built up since I was in seventh grade. Right. And, and I stopped for just a second. I stopped. And I was like, no, 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 no. I got to push through this. I got to push through it. So then I pushed through. And during that push through, I was able to get some really cool guests on it. So it's okay. See, that wouldn't have happened. And the enemy's trying to block those connections, right? So it's, it's very interesting. So the boat, I would love to tell you what the boat means. I'm processing because I was offered to do something else that I just don't feel lines up with what God's asking me to do. So now it's maybe my time to get out of that boat. I think it's fascinating. It's a great, it's a great conversation. And I think it's a great conversation with two guys. Mm -hmm. Women may not get this truthfully. Right. I don't know. Right. I know we have women listening in, but two guys that think they know answers mm -hmm. often. That's our identity. I actually circled identity again. I wrote it and then mm -hmm. I circled it again while you were just talking. That, that's our identity. We, we know the answer. We know what to do. We've got strategies. We've got plans. We, hey, come on. That's, that's what we do. And then to, to ask a fairly simple question from an instruction, get out of the boat. What, what is that boat? I mean, the boat represented for Peter, that's their tool for business. Does that oh. mean we stop doing business? Right. For, for Peter, it meant comfort. If there was a, the water was a little, we don't, I don't fish, but I mean, we try to use the fisherman analogies. Right. Is it our, is it something that we have confused with our identity, which I, I think, yes, but something that came to me while you were talking and I'll just mention it and then you can respond. Sure. I, I, I think it might be just. Get out of who you are today um, to what the next step is. And yeah. I, maybe we're making too much of it or not enough. I, yeah, I don't know, but it's, it's a, it's a good conversation, right? Right. No. And, and it's, it's tr like for this last three years, I'm just not who I used to be. And I'll, I'll share a story. So August 21. Like my father-in-law, he's a deacon at a church. We don't go to his church, but he's a deacon there. And like when I first met him, his, he's huge. He's a big man and he's got this baritone, right? And that's not very deep, but you understand God's talking to you when this man is talking to you. And his first question is, when did you meet the Lord? And I was like, right now, right now. And I probably need a new pair of pants. So... <laughs> There's those two things, right? Cause I never, like, that's the first question out of his mouth, right? Anyway, fast forward, like he obviously could tell I, I didn't, right? And that's why he asked the question. Okay. So fast forward, I 
I pulled them aside. I said, hey, kind of need your help with something. Rachel and I are going to start going on some dates. And I really just need you to watch the kids. Can you do that? And I loved it. Love it to be weekly if possible. If not, let's just pick at some times. That's all I said to him. His answer was the following. Yes, because I could tell you met the Lord. I don't know what happened. I didn't even know how to answer that, right? So then I was like, okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> so I, I went in, I talked to my wife. I was like, that was a weird answer. It wasn't, he didn't need to say that, okay? Fast forward, I'm meeting with someone that I, that used to work for me, okay? And I'm, I'm having lunch and, and I was talking to her about, she's a catering director about catering something at our church. And she goes, Hey, can I say something? I was like, sure. She goes, you, you kind of have the same aura of who you are, but you're just a lot nicer. And I was like, wow, that was, that was interesting. <laughs> but going back to the thing of the new you, right? I think you're hundred percent right. I think the boat is get out of the comfort. I already got out of the business. I closed the business. So I got out of that boat and I trusted him and he's provided. It's amazing. We've had that conversation before. I've let go of who I was. However, I never stood. I, I became this person, but I never like went out with that person. Does that make sense? Mm. And I think now he's no. Go, go do that. Yeah. And all of that's good. There's a, I think if someone's listening, depending on where they are in their journey, there might be something that may nag at them just a little bit. It used to nag at me. I've gotten to where I accept it, but I'm going to ask the question sure. for, for my benefit and maybe someone who's listening. Sure. Why did you have to close your business? Mm. There, that could be practical. It could be spiritual. There could be other reasons. I mean, for us, just real quick, our journey was the business closed on its own because it was 2008 and we were in real estate. So it was like, I wasn't really asked to get out of the boat. I was, the boat sank. I don't know. Maybe that's not a good analogy, but there was, right, all right, of a sudden right. there was no boat there. And I'm going, <laughs> oh my gosh, I got to, I got to walk on the water. Anyway, right. I'll have to think about that. That's, that's never come out that way. but. And maybe even be, we could go hyper-spiritual or we could go super practical for the person yeah. listening in, because there are some people that that's something that's really going to bug them. Why yeah. did you have to close the business? Yeah. So I think I, I, I'll try to do a little of both, but I'll just tell the story. Um, so my wife was a stay-at-home mom. We have three kids. Our income was this business. Okay. And this business was doing very well. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was doing great. We had 45 people working for us. It was just me and this, my partner, all of our clients were Christians and I, I met the Lord and, and I was like, okay, I'm going to start just really doing who God's called me to do all the time, not just sometimes. So we're having this conversation with this client and she's just having a hard time. And I go, Hey, I read something today. And I think maybe it was for you. And I just shared the scripture with her and we started having this great conversation. I don't even know what I said. No idea. And she started crying and she goes, I needed that. I was like, cool. Can you let me know what I told you? <laughs> because I really don't remember, but I didn't say that, but my partner was quiet the entire time. And we get off the call and he's, Hey, I was uncomfortable with that. I go with why? He's like the whole God thing. And I said, cool. God's always going to win. Always. I uh, found out he's, he, I mean, I knew he was an atheist, but it, be, it became very evident at that point. So we had the conversation of, hey, all these clients are Christian. Who do you think gave it to us? Right. And, and at that one, point, one, I was one quick thing. One quick thing, yeah. Ron, was that an intentional thing of every, all the clients being Christian? Did y'all no. market for that or did it no. just organically just, just or, mm -hmm. organically interesting and 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 looking back god orchestrated all of it you know he's boom 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 you can help all this and so 
I didn't give him credit for that at the point. But anyway, you know, fast forward, I, I pause doing any new work, any new work. I stopped it. And I really just was focusing on my relationship with the Lord and my wife. That was it. And I paused the company for a year, just a year. We had, we had, everything was on autopilot anyway. And he said, shut it down. I was like, okay, okay. I went downstairs, closed it, fired everybody, done. We were done. Came upstairs. <laughs> I told my wife, I go, hey, we, we, I fired everybody and I closed it. She goes, oh, what are we going to do? And I go, we're going to do whatever God says to do. And we're going to trust him and he's going to provide because he's faithful. And that's all I said. And that was three years ago. God's been faithful. And it's, it's not easy for me. You know, I had to work out a lot of things from being my identity as the provider, right? To really understanding God is the provider, right? And I'm just the steward of what he provides. And I'm still not really good at that. I'm working on it, right? Like I haven't arrived on any level whatsoever. <laughs> and that's, that's new for me to say anyway. Um, but I'm working at it. So I think practical, it was about obedience. Didn't matter if it was hard or whatever. Like he died on the cross for us. That's hard. That's hard work. Me closing a company. Hmm, yeah. I'd stunk because I, I love those people. But God had better plans and you can't get to the cooler plans or the new thing he wants to do with old wineskins. And that's what we just kept seeing over and over and over again. New wine, new wine, new wineskins. And so like right now we're in a season of preparation. We don't even know what that means. We're just preparing. Is that moving? Maybe like we're preparing the house. We don't even know if that's what it is, but we're just preparing. So I don't so know it, if that answered it or not, but it, it, it does a little bit. I might, I might ask you to get a little bit. Uh, sure. I don't even know if this is granular. I don't even know, but I mean, it, so to, to someone would say, all right, so God told you to, to shut down and fire 45 people. What about those people? Yes. You know, what, what about their role? What about, what about the clients that we heard their Christian clients? Mm -hmm. How did, how did they, that seems a little harsh for some of that. Yeah. And, and, and let's, so here's then the third part of it you could address. You sure. probably went from X amount to zero times X, unless there were some things still built in there. And then I do address those things too, because then sure. I want to ask the next thing is like, how is he, this is the way I word it now, because I've been through similar things. Yeah. When someone asks me questions that are a little more logistical, Mm -hmm. The wording that I use is this is how he's getting resources yes. to us right now. So maybe yes. thinking to like, and, and I don't know why, and again, Ron, my, our, our story, people kind of want to know how, how right. did you go from right. seven figure businesses to homeless and bankrupt and then where right. you are now? And I go, there's a story there. Do you have time or do you want to quit? Yeah, so exactly. We got a little bit of time, I guess is the yeah. point. Okay. So tell me about the people because sure. there's a heart for people. And then sure. maybe we went from here to here and here's what's going on now. Yeah. No. So the people were easy. I found them jobs because they were important to me. So I had a couple connections in the micro content space and I found all of them work with other companies. So that was very simple, but I had to let them know that this company was no longer Right. And so it worked out, worked out great for them. As for the clients, it was just, it was a real conversation. It was funny because none of them were upset because also my goal, I never wanted a client to stay with me forever, ever, 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 ever. I gave them the tools to do everything I did for them 
on their own. And so no one felt high and dry, not a single person. And, and that was, as far as I'm concerned, a, a blessing because I didn't, I was still trying to please everyone. But at the end of the day, I had to do what God was really calling me to do. And it was not easy. And walking away from that, especially when I'm a planner, I, I focus on things. I am risk aversion, right? I can plan everything to a T and not fail. That's how my whole life's been. And I don't like it. I don't like failing. So I will plan everything to be successful. And this was not that time. And then, so my wife expected me to go launch something and take off and do something new. And I've just become patient and waited on the Lord. And so that's what I've been doing. It kind of freaked her out. And then resource wise to kind of touch on that, it's very interesting how resources come. Uh, she was, she was offered a staff role at the church that we didn't ask for. We didn't talk about, and it fits what she's supposed, she has a degree in sociology and psychology and she's the kids director. It makes all the sense in the world. And so now that did not, that did not equal, equal out, but it's, it's, it's interesting because then we had some people go, Hey, we had a flat tire and someone at church goes, Hey, I'm feeling called to buy you new tires. I'm like, I, I appreciate that. I don't need new tires. And she, and, and he goes, I understand that just God told me to buy you tires. So I'm buying you tires and here's a check. And I was like, what, what? My, my favorite story that I tell people, cause it makes no sense, but I'll, I'll share it. I was driving my wife's car cause all of our cars were paid off and I was driving my wife's car and I was going to pick up, um, my kids where normally they would have been in the car, but they weren't. And at 60 miles an hour, I slammed into a car, totaled her car. Everyone was fine. I walked out, she walked out. She was really nice about it. It was around Easter and we were serving for Easter and the pastors, my wife didn't, an I'm going to give everyone something not to do. She didn't answer my phone call. So I just text her a picture of the car. <laughs> and so she instantly started crying with the pastors. And I was like, we're fine. Um, but I heard in my voice because I was literally an hour away from everybody. I heard in my, my head, call my mother-in-law. I was like, that's weird. So I called my mother-in-law. She was a block away from me. So she came and got me. And God was so good at this because that could have ended poorly for the other person or for me. That could have ended poorly if my kids were there could have been so many ended purely badly, right? So then my mother-in-law was in a car accident a couple months prior to that, and it took him forever to get the check, right? And it was the same thing. She hit a car, took forever. So I was like, oh my gosh, my mom had a, has two cars, one they're both new and one was just sitting around. And I was like, hmm, I'm going to ask my mom, mom, can I borrow your car? Because I just destroyed mine, right? That was kind of hard. So she gave me her car to borrow, but I was afraid to drive it because I was like, I don't want to wreck that. Why did I wreck my wife's car instead of my car? It was a nicer Lexus SUV. And I was like, what am I going to do? So then the pastors just started praying double portion, double portion. And I'm looking at like the Kelly blue book of my car. And it was like 9,000. I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not going to be able to replace my wife's car because we don't like car payments, right? And I kept hearing pastors praying double portion over us, double portion. So the insurance gets back to me Monday, four days later. It goes, hey, here's what the is. Here's your check. It's $18,000. I'm like, what? That's awesome. That's a double portion, right? Not realizing how the used car market was. Everything was so expensive and it was a worse vehicle than what she had. And I was like, what am I going to do? 
And I asked my wife, I go, what color car do you want? She goes, I don't care. Just don't spend more. And I go, cool. Can you just tell me the color car you want? And she goes, fine. Pearl white. And I go, that was oddly specific. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was like, oddly specific. So I'm talking to her dad who also works in the car business. And he's laughing. He goes, well, you know what color it won't be? I said, absolutely. I know what color it's not going to be. Right. And I go, I can't even find a car that matches what we want in the lower mileage that we had because we had a low mileage and it's not going to be as nice. And so we're looking and we couldn't find anything. We couldn't find anything. We were going to settle. So I was talking to my mom. She goes, I go, Hey mom, cause you know how the insurance does. They give you X amount. They give you X amount until they get the title and then they give you the rest. And I go, Hey mom, I found this, this car. It kind of works. Kind of works. And she goes, where's it at? And I go, I don't know. One of those rinky dink deal dealers on, on Broadway. She goes, no, cause I needed like the X amount of money. And then I was just going to pay her back when I got the insurance. And she goes, no, just go back to Lexus. And I go, mom, they don't have something at Lexus that fits what I, and she goes, what are you looking for? And I go, mom, I just want the same kind of car. Like I, I, I don't want anything more. And she goes, what color does Rachel want? And I go, she ironically said pro white, but said no big deal. Right. And I go, mom, there's not going to be anything. She goes, did you check this other Lexus that was like two hours away? And ironically, they had a pro white Lexus SUV that was newer, less miles than what she had. And it was double the amount of what I had. And I go, okay, mom, this is the only thing they have. So I'm not going to do it. And she goes, I'll pay for it go get it. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And, and my father-in-law was praying for God to do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask. Right. So I call my, my wife and I go, Hey, my mom just said this. And she goes, no. And I go, yeah, it's kind of where I was like, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So I was talking to my father-in-law and telling him the whole story. He goes, time out. We literally just prayed for God to do exceedingly more than you could ever ask. So now you need to decide, is your pride going to get in the way or are you going to accept the blessing? I was like, ouch. Okay. So I call my wife. I go, I'm going to go pick up your car. I'll see you in a minute. So I call this dealer and I go, I'm coming from two hours away. Do not bait and switch me. I want this car. Do not sell it. Like I'm paying cash. And he goes, I put sold on it. I said, okay. If I come <laughs> like, like, and it's gone, I'm be really angry. And so I get there and there's my salesman and this couple arguing about the car. And I'm like, uh oh, what's going on? And he goes, I come out, I go, Hey, what, what's up? And he goes, funny story. I go, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. And he goes, right when you called and said you wanted this car. Their deal fell through. And then I put it on hold. They went to the bank, figured out there was a mistake, came back to try to buy it. And now it was sold out from under them. And I said, that was just a God thing. So thank you. I'm really sorry. And then they ended up getting a different car. But it was, it was just crazy how all of that works. So talking about God gives resources from unexplained places. Before. I would have said, I figured that out. Look at what my mom did, <laughs> right? Old Ron, that would have been the answer. New Ron, all glory to God on that one. All glory. There's, there was a double upon double blessing that I can't explain except for only God. Only God could have taken a $9,000 car and turned it into a $50,000 car. Only God. So one thing, Ron, that's interesting, there's two things that I picked up from that story. One I'll get to in just a second, but with, sure. with new, with new path, new you, 
-hmm. and with what you're doing in ministry. And it seems like it's where it seems like it might be the boat you're in currently. I'll say it that way. How about that? Yes. 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 We'll start start using the right language here. So the boat you're in currently is obviously communicating to men, helping men maybe that, that were in a place like where you were to where you are now. Not that you've got all the answers or anything like that. I think that's a powerful uh, transition that many of us, I think, will continue to have to make. And that is, we used to think we knew it all. The longer we lived, the less and less we recognized. Yeah. But you brought up earlier that you wanted to be the provider that was important for you when we were talking about your company. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think when we're talking about putting our, our, our wife and kids in a car, many times that's important badge of honor for us to say it's got good car solid safe good tires what you've talked about tires you've talked yes. about all these things here yes so in in the interaction that you've had with men since you've been called to work with men yep what do they need to know about the process of moving from the if it is to be it's up to me i've got to provide which there is there is a scripture for that i think the scripture can be twisted often Okay. And that is you're worse than an infidel if you don't provide. I think it's, anyway, I won't go into it. Right. right. How are, what are you seeing with men you interact with? I know you lead groups and stuff like that mm-hmm. with all the talking you're doing and moving from where you did to, to that place where they could allow something like you just shared with that story to happen. Help us connect the dots with whatever. I mean, I'm kind of throwing you a big wide net sure. here to take it wherever you want to. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it's good. And, and, Rain me in if you want. So I think there's two things that that men have to do. There's three. They have to really surrender. They really have to surrender, right? Yeah, exactly. And none of us wanted to do that. Like at the end of the day, none of us wanted to do it. And then the two prayers, Craig Rochelle has dangerous prayer book, and it's about seek, seek my heart, seek me. Look, search me. Is there something within me? that is not pleasing uh, for you and break it. And that's, uh, that's the last thing you have to be broken. And what, and it's funny cause I, I'm helping a guy right now who he had a $35 million company that just got snatched and lost it all. And, and I'm like, look, man, you were about to buy a jet. So you tell me what you were chasing. Were you chasing God or were you chasing fame? And, and it's funny cause my daughter was on stage this last Sunday and she's seven, she's seven, but she was on stage. They were doing this vision thing with kids and she was up there writing notes. And I literally thought she was drawing. She was taking sermon notes at seven and wrote yes to chasing God, no to chasing fame. And I was like, wow, that was a message to me. And the reason I know it was a message to me, because underneath it, she wrote NPNY. And I was like, Dalen, what is that? And she goes, new path near you, daddy. And I was like, oh, wow. Talking about, like, I don't talk about my podcast to my children. I don't, like, it blew my mind. She even knew new patent right and i was like telling this guy go look god talks through your children all the time and it if you choose to pay attention and then act on it i said but for you you're starting to you're 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 not willing to forgive yourself for losing the company and you're not surrendering yourself to god's will and you're trying to figure it out all by yourself And if you don't let go of all of that, you're just going to be stuck or you're going to find yourself repeating the same thing over and over and over again, which I did. It was funny because I would always find myself in the same situations. I was like, how's that even happen? Right. It's because I didn't learn. But for, for the question, I, I think the biggest thing is men have to be broken and then surrender to God's will. And that's. That's more than just saying it. That's more than yeah. anything. I, I, to, I asked my wife, when did you think I would go back to being who I used to? Because she, t- she shared with me, she goes, I stopped praying that you would change. 
And that was painful to hear. Right? And then we have to reprioritize our life. You have to chase God. You have to like equal with your wife and you have to chase her. Like everyone, we all chased our wife when we were trying to get married, right? Or date her. And then once, once we got married, like I love her to death, but I stopped pursuing her. I didn't feel I needed to pursue her. And God, God said to me, just because you're happy doesn't mean she is. And that was painful. Like all of it, it was the most painful experience I've ever had, but I had to be broken. And like I told my friend, I was like, look, the enemy came after your identity, which was this business. And God let that happen because your identity was in the wrong spot. And until your identity is in the right spot, you're going to have a crack and the enemy's going to exploit it. So one thing that's interesting, you mentioned surrender first and I went, oh, that's good. That's good. But then you mentioned you got to be broken last. And yeah, I, unfortunately, right. that order seems to go broken, then surrender. At least it did for me. It seems right. like your journey may have been, and maybe it's men that way. I, and, and we hate to generalize, but women are different. It's a different right. thing. They seem right. to be more humble, surrender. They're the ones that lead us into the spiritual yes. walk. And, and yes. sometimes it's kicking and screaming. Sometimes it's whatever, but that's interesting. So my question, and it's, it's a trick question. Sure. Sure. It's a question there is no answer to, right. but I'm going to ask it anyway. Okay. Is it possible to reverse the order and surrender first so that we don't have to be broken? Yeah. So here's, here's why I say it this way. Okay. Cause surrender is you have to be open to the idea of giving control up. Once you're able to give control up in your mind, you're not there. Like you haven't truly surrendered until so that's you're the broken. step. That might be the step out of the boat, right? Are we going right. back to step out of the boat? We are stepping out of the boat, right? So we, we, we have to trust in God and we have to surrender, right? But he wants a step first. Your step is the mind that your mind is going to say, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. Right. Then, then you can ask God to show you what needs to be broken because what you think is needs to be broken might not be what God's trying to break. It might be that, but it might be a lot more other things that stink. <laughs> that you don't want to give surrender to. Like you can have all of this little area over here, Lord, but you can't have this. This is my stuff to like, this is, this is who I am. He wants all of that broken. And, and when I, when I shared this with him, I was like, do you surrender to him? And he's like, yeah, I go, do you, do you? Right. And then he's like, yeah. And I go, okay, let's talk about it. So as we're talking, he, and this is not anything I'm doing or saying or anything, but you could tell God's working in his head. Cause then by the end of the conversation, he's crying and he's a, he's a manly man, right? That took me off that he was there, but I was like, all right, Lord, you, you did something. Right. And even yesterday I checked with him. I was like, ask him to break you. It's hard. And then when he breaks you re-surrender. Resurrect. But it, it starts with you have to be okay with the process. You know? I, I one of the things I do, I've shared this often, is that I'll listen to the Sermon on the Mount audibly mm -hmm. many times. I've done it almost every morning for the last three, four years. And at the very end of the what we call the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 7. There's this, I'll call it the clincher, where Jesus says, there's two people. This is my version of it. There's basically two people. Uh, that There's the one that listens to me and then the one, the one that doesn't. And the one that doesn't, the rains come, the floods come, and the house that's built on sand washes away. And right. then the one that listens and heeds my voice, the rains come, the floods come. And something just recently, I've listened to it over and over again. 
the rains come and the floods come regardless. Right. Yeah. Either way, you're getting, you, because, and because many, many, many times what we'll try to do is say, oh, this, it's the enemy or it's this or yeah. that. No, the rains and the floods and the sunshine earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, there's the sun shines on the just and the just, unjust. It's like, yeah. the, those are, life is going to happen. It's what yeah. are we going to deal with? I, I love your example with this guy you're talking about, because for me, I never had a great deal of shame that entered into my being and who I was, but because my entire identity was I'm successful in business, I do well, we've raised money, mm. all that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden mm. now we're homeless mm. and bankrupt. It's I'm dealing with something I haven't dealt with before, which is shame. And so I, I've come to terms that this surrender, this surrender broken, surrender broken is not an yeah. event, it's a process. And yeah. part of our, what this word, this big word that we use called sanctification, that no one can totally explain it, that that's right. Tim's sanctification, Ron's sanctification right now is having everything burned and scraped and, and taken away that is world system so yeah. that we are preparing for that kingdom of God for all of eternity. And, yes. and that's the, I don't want to just punch my ticket, which is what a lot of us think we do. We just right. punch our salvation ticket. We're good. And we can just right. keep doing all this other stuff, whatever the mm -hmm. other stuff is. And you right. and I, we had to purge a lot of this mammon business, mm -hmm. success, stuff like that. So anyway, all right, that's my preach, my rant. There's another no, practical thing. And then I want us to talk about new path, new you as we wrap up here. I've heard you say, I, I've tried to keep a count, but it was probably at least five or six times. I may be off a little bit. Something to the effect of God told me, or God said, or I heard God say, mm -hmm. and I know, Ron, that there are people that are right now going, I don't hear God's voice. How does oh, yeah. that happen? He was still, he was still a little bit messed up and he said he heard God's voice. You got to be, this is some people saying this, you got to be perfect before you even go before the Lord. So right. talk a little bit about that topic of hearing from God and maybe just personally, what was your journey? How have you come to it? Are you 110% confident that's God's voice or yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, all right, that's our yeah. last teaching topic. I'm going to talk about a few practical things so people can connect with you. Sure. No, I'll, 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 I'll give a story because my daughter asked this exact question. How do you hear from God? And I hear from God a lot of different ways. And I was like, here's, here's one way you can do it. Grab your Bible because his word's living, right? And just ask a question out loud. Just let's ask God a question, right? And she's 10. And she's asking God a question. And I was like, all right, Lord, this is your time. I've never said genie time, but it's my daughter. Can we just start her relationship in a really cool way? So she asks a question and she said a word. And what's awful is I can't remember the word, but it wasn't like something that was readily in every Bible page. Let's just say that, right? And it was part of her question. And I go, okay, sometimes, honey, this is what I do. I'll pray and then I'll open the Bible to wherever. I said, so just open the Bible where you feel God's leading you to open the Bible. And so she opened it and she was drawn to this section of the Bible and it was her word that she said. She goes, oh, that's the word. I said, let's, let's read the story. And it literally answered her question. And I was like, how cool is that? Right. And I thanked God right then. I said, let's thank him. And so then she was like, hmm, I go, and now sometimes I'll just turn somewhere else to see if there's something else. And I go, is there anywhere else you feel you need to turn? So she turns and there was the word again. Right. And I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I, I hear God through his word. Okay. But if I'm like, I prayed a lot to hear God's, let me rephrase that. I prayed a lot to hear the enemy's voice because the enemy whispers. And then when you say it, it becomes your voice, right? So I'm downstairs one day 
And I kept hearing, your wife doesn't need you. She's fine. But first time ever, it was not my voice. I was stoked. I was so excited. I jumped up, ran upstairs, gave my wife a hug, and she goes, I needed that. I said, I know. I know you need it because I heard a voice that wasn't mine, right? So when it comes to like God, like I'll see things and all this other stuff. But if you think about it, even Paul on the road to Damascus, he was not perfect. He was not a good guy. And there was Jesus, right? <laughs> and Peter, not not the best of guys, Jesus called it. And I think if you're open to the calling and you really listen, God touches you in a lot of different ways. It could be a gut feeling. It could be his word. I mean, his, his word tells, I mean, it's a living word. Um, it could be a small little voice. I mean, if you think about it, all the storms in the Bible, it was a quiet voice that calmed it. So if it's a loud, crazy voice, that's probably not God. If it's a quiet, quiet voice yeah. and it's just nagging and it's pushing you forward. How I look at it is if the voice is pushing me forward, that could be from God. But I, I, I have a really cool way of discerning stuff. But if the voice is pushing backwards or look back, look back at the shame, that's not God. That's the enemy not wanting you to move forward. And that's it. How important, how important is it? This is, this is, this is my last question. Sure. How important is it for people that are, you, you use the word workaholic at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. sure with the level of responsibility you had in your company and all that, there was a lot of phone calls, a lot going on. You mm -hmm. probably had at least one phone. How important is it to be still and quiet for you? I mean, some people say they can hear God and they're going at it. I can't. I've tried and I've fooled myself, I think, before. I mm -hmm. think that's where a lot of other voices and things come at me, but I have got to be still and quiet. How about you? hundred percent. Going back to what you just said about being kind of tricked or fooling yourself. Rachel and I would try to have God time at night. You're tired. What's the first thing that doesn't happen? God. God doesn't, God doesn't want your leftovers. He wants to be first. So we said, all right, Lord, we're going to, this is three and a half years ago, and we do it every day now. We're going to start our day with you. However long it is, we're going to start the day. And Friday, we, we Sabbath really hard on Fridays. We disconnect from phone. We disconnect everything. Um, I've actually transitioned my driving focus on my phone where if you text me on Friday, it says I'm Sabbathing today and I, there's no tech in my life today. So I'm not responding. And so I use that, but that was, that was a, a journey in itself as well. But it's, it's, it's hyper important to spend time with God. So you get to know him and just like any friend, any relationship, it was funny because I was spending time with God Friday and I was laughing. And it was like, I was joking with him and it was the craziest thing because I have never been in that type of moment. And I was telling my wife, because that's the other piece that's important. We share what God's telling us. And it's funny because sometimes we'll do it together. Sometimes we do it separately. Uh, it kind of depends on the feeling, but almost all the time they intercede. It's really cool. And it's not like we're doing the same, but. It was the first time that I was like joking with him, like as a friend and I was laughing out loud and I was like, oh my gosh, that was weird. That was cool. Right. But he's, he's a friend. He's a friend, but you have to spend time with him to understand his voice. Jesus, Jesus said, the sheep know my voice. My people know my voice. You'll know the voice if you spend time. Yeah. Going back to the marriage example you used earlier, if you were to have married Rachel, committed to her yep. and then said, okay, I'm going to go do other things. 
Yes. We're not going to have communication. We're not going to have intimacy. We're not going to do anything together mm -hmm. until we die. That's the relationship a lot of people try to have with God. They, they punch that so salvation good. card and then they yes. just say, we're, we, we're not going to do any of the good stuff, the fun stuff, right. the hard stuff too. Right. And so we have to build it. How long have you been married, Ron? Almost 12 years. 12 years. We're babies. Just, just celebrated 35. And I want to tell you that right. one of the things my wife, Gloria, and I do, and we've done it now for going on close to, let's see, what was it, 08? I mean, gosh, 15, 17 years is spend a lot of quiet. We schedule nothing early. Yep. And it's usually coffee. It's usually something spiritual, something scriptural. Sometimes it's practical because you need to do yeah. that stuff too. Yeah. But it is typically heavy duty, spiritual. Hey, what are you getting from the Lord? Ooh, I'm getting that too. How about that? And, mm -hmm. and there are times when we were going through some tough times where it was four, five, six hours a day. Yes. And so anyway, that is, that is really cool. And we just, I think I said this, we 35 years, we're, we're like, we're, we're just getting started. So anyway, all right. So we could keep talking, but new path, new you yes. is that name that you got for a penny. And, yep. and, and so obviously there was something going on there. Tell us what it is yeah. and, and how people, what's going on there and why people need to connect with it. And then I've got one more question before we wrap up. Sure. And before I do that, you said something that is important that I want to touch on, especially for men, yeah. like, um, mm -hmm. like Bible prayer yeah. times in my calendar, right? You can calendar what's important, right? Yes. Yeah. So you don't schedule things early because it affects that. So That's right. if you want to create a relationship and a consistency calendar, it. it's super easy. Just do it, especially That's business right. guys, right? Just calendar it. Yeah. And, right. then, and then also turn off the ringers, notifications, oh, gosh, all the yes. stuff that they want. I yes. don't have any sounds come from my phone nope. because when I sit with someone like we're doing here, I want to be focused on Ron. When I sit yes. with my wife, I need to be focused on my wife. All right. New path, new you. Tell us about yep. it and what's going on. It's, it started off as a podcast. It's, it's to help men on a spiritual journey. And what I've learned about podcasting that, you know, here's the journey you are on. You're reaching down and helping this person down here on the same journey. And that's what that, that's what it's about. It's, it's a, it's a real raw journey. I don't even use a, my microphone. It's funny. Cause everyone's like, why aren't you using your mic? I was like, cause I just want it to be real. Like I'm just talking in my phone. Sometimes if it's 15, 20 minutes, they're quick bites. I have some cool guests on it. Um, and it's just really whatever God puts on my heart. That's it. And that's what that's about. Now it's transitioning a little bit where God was really telling me step out, step out of the boat, right? And, and maybe get into helping people launch podcasts that are Christians and really focus on that. So I started focusing on men, right? Cause that was my thing. And ironically, God's funny. God is funny. He gives me women, yeah. right? It's, it's crazy. There was this, this, these two women that are just like, Hey, I've been talking to her for a while. She goes, my shirt. She goes, I want to start a podcast. It's called divine table talk. They, I helped her launch. They hit number one. They've been number one for a week and a half. They were, it, it's amazing. They launched her book career, like doing a lot of cool things. Then I get, I redo my website around helping men. It's literally helping men. And I have this woman reach out to me. And she goes, Hey, I was praying and God told me to renew my mind, which is my podcast verse, right? Romans 12 too. And I Googled top Christian coach and you came up. So I would like you to coach me. I was like, let's, let's talk. Cause that's super interesting. And so we were talking and I was like, what do you want to do? And she has an amazing story. And I was like, wow, Lord, am I supposed to just help anybody that's Christian? I, I don't understand. But then looking back at my clientele from before, guess what? Most of them were Christian women. So now it's okay. I'm just going to really just, however, to help get God's message out. That's what I'm focused on. One quick thing there. We'll say this and then move along. 
Yeah. Women are willing to ask for, for help. Most men yes. won't ask for it. I mean, it could be true. that. That's true. That is so funny. Yeah. No, I, I just relaunched my website. I just got season three going for a new path, new you. And it's, it, it's funny because I'm getting a lot of people that show took off faster than my other show. And I didn't expect, it. you know, and it, it's interesting because it's a vulnerable show and I share my story. I share my testimony in that I share my struggles and it's just kind of like how I look at it is like, when I'm not around, my kids can listen to and go, that's who dad was. That's who dad was. That's what I wanted to be. And, and I know cause God is amazing. It will hit people and help people because that's what testimonies do. And the hard, you have to have the hard, you have to have the, the storm or your testimony is not as cool. It's not as relatable, right? Yeah, that's good. Ron, tell everybody where they can find anything else. I know we can probably guess the domain that you were able to get, but go ahead and give it here just for those folks that might be cruising around and then Sure. And then what I, we're going to recommend is people maybe jump over there right when they leave here, if they're on the podcast platform. And uh, so just, where all can they find you? If, they, if someone needs Ron, where do they need to go? Newpathnewyou.com. I mean, that's the easiest one. I love Instagram. It's our cool junior, um, but it's, it's a different story. So probably my, web, my website, because God, God's actually having me possibly close down my Instagram. And that's really hard. Ooh, that's a whole nother topic for another day, the social yes. media, because, yes. because you mentioned micro content and that's mm -hmm. where all that stuff lives on no. Instagrams and stuff. So anyway, we'll, we're going to pause that because that's probably a long conversation. Yes. And I'm going to wrap, I'm going to wrap up with, with my question that I summarize with where seek, go create those three words we mashed together for our podcast. You, you can only choose one. I'm either going to allow you or force you to only choose one. Which Got word it. do you choose that resonates or whatever? Don't, don't overthink it. And why? Sure. Seek, seek, seek the kingdom of God first, right? And you have it first in your title. And I don't think that's on accident and, and seek, because if you seek God first, everything else falls in line. If your relationship, the vertical relationship is right. All the, all these other relationships are good. So seek. Amen. Yeah. There's a reason it's first. And that Matthew six thirty three is a foundational scripture for my journey. Hey, mm. listen, make sure you go check out new path, new you. If you're on your podcast platform right now, just as soon as we're done, go over and follow. I think it's called on most places now subscribe. If that's what your player says. Listen to a few episodes. I've burned through a number over the last few weeks and it's, it's cool. It's, it's summer short. There's some longer ones. So anyway, just go check that out. We are Seek Go Create. We release new episodes here every Monday. We appreciate the support of everyone. If you would like to support us, you love what we're doing here and you want to support us financially, all you have to do is go to SeekGoCreate.com forward slash support. That's SeekGoCreate.com forward slash support. We will accept a little bit or a lot of your financial support. So go there and do that. You can also leave a message and communicate. So thanks for doing that. Again, thanks for joining us here. Until next time, continue being all that you were created to be. 